What's up, guys? My name is Anton Suarez, and this is going to be the first ANS podcast. So you may be wondering what kind of podcast is this going to be. This podcast is going to be pre-recorded on every Friday and uploaded either on that Friday or on that Saturday the next day. Depends on when I upload this. This most likely will be uploaded. You'll probably be seeing this on Saturday. Now, what this podcast is going to be about is technology in Linux and in te technology in general. It's what I'm interested in. So many of the articles might be covered in mainstream media, and some of them might, might not be because they're topics I find interesting, and that's what I really want to report on. So what I'm going to be reporting on in this uh, and this podcast is five separate articles. The three main articles are Linux-based and they're technology-based. They're kind of main articles that are going around, like Microsoft making a, uh, a Linux operating system and China's Linux operating system, things like that. The fourth article is going to be a Linux gaming article. So right now we have Alien Isolation coming out for um, Mac and Linux. And then the last one is something that I like, and it's going to be Maker Fair in this situation. Maker Fair is in New York City, and it's an event that's coming up, and I want to talk about that. So that's how we're going to do this, and you can see that I have the web page, and then you have me in the uh, um, in the webcam area. Now, the main question I'm going to have for you guys to write in the comments below is, do you have any problems with audio and video sync? Uh, I've been having problems with that with OBS. I haven't can, can't really figure it out. If you do see it, please write it down in the comment section. Just a heads up, I really can't see it anymore because I've been watching it so much to try to find it, but I think I've kind of got it nailed down, but I really can't tell. So let's jump right into it. So the first article we have is Neo Kai Lin is the Linux OS China built to look like Windows XP. And this is kind of crazy in the sense that China wants its users to feel com comfortable. And so China didn't want to pay for Microsoft. They didn't want to upgrade to Windows 8. They didn't trust Microsoft in how it's an American company. They didn't trust it because they don't really trust us that much. And they didn't want to use Windows and Microsoft and all that. So they went to first, they partnered with Canonical and they tried to make Ubuntu or Ubuntu Kylin. And they tried to make Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu Kylin. It didn't work. They didn't like it. They didn't like that Canonical wasn't a Chinese company. They didn't want to deal with an outside source, so they wanted to make it all in-house. So what they did was they made Neo Kai Lin. Now Neo Kai Lin is based off what people have said, based off Fedora. So it's Fedora based maybe, and it uses the Yum package system. Now it's very basic, and here I'll mute this real quick, and you can see a short little video right here. Um, it's very so similar to Windows XP. It's not even funny. Like if you look at it, like really, and I'll even like fast forward a little bit. The start menu thing elements of the OS are so crazily Windows based and Windows XP based it's ridiculous and I do um, understand why China would do this it makes their users comfortable they're used to Windows XP everyone was used to Windows XP at one point or another so that made their users comfortable and they want to have that back and I bet they didn't like Ubuntu Kylin is because of unity and I don't personally like unity myself so I don't blame them for not wanting to use Ubuntu um, it's weird to see this. Uh, they're selling it on computers that um, companies in China that are building computers that are shipping people's, uh, making people's computers, and they ship it to uh, stores, and you can buy a computer in China. Most likely, it couldn't be loaded with Neo Kailin, and uh, it's weird to see China doing this. I do figure out that I uh, figure that China, I do figure that China wants full control of their operating system that's running on the people's machines, and uh, that they want control and they want to see what people are using. It's a security, uh, a privacy issue, obviously, for the Chinese uh, population, but that's what the Chinese government probably wants to do in this situation. Um, but even in the article, it says that pe the Chinese computers, that doesn't mean that people aren't going to uh, wipe them and put actual Windows XP, because there are PCs in the end of it, and they could just wipe this um, fake uh, Neo Kylin Windows XP clone off and just install real Windows XP if the user actually wanted to. Uh, so the next story is um, something cool, which is home automation. I do like home automation. It is the future of home where you're going to walk in one day and say, and your home's going to say, welcome back, Mr. Uh, whatever your name is. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Smith. It's going to say everything that's going on. Your wife's at a doctor's appointment. Your your daughter's at soccer practice. Things like that. It's going to tell you what's going on. It's your house is going to be alive one day. And it's going to be crazy. But we're not there yet. And we're probably going to be there in a couple decades, I'd say, 20 years maybe. Um, but... Um, Z-Wave Plus Home Automation is powered by Linux, and it uses the Raspberry Pi, which I love. I love when computer, I love when companies are using the Raspberry Pi in intuitive ways that uh, make it cool. I use the Raspberry Pi in a project called Community Monitors, where we had different things of monitors displaying information for the community, Amber Alerts, Silver Alerts, and this is 
making home automation possible. Where um, here and has a picture of the dashboard here. Very cool how this works. So you have you can control the kitchen temperature, the living room. You can have feeds of I believe C, uh, CTV feeds. I don't know. It's it's special devices. So here in the article it talks about uh, Z-Wave wireless enabled devices. So I'm assuming that that means you have to have these specific devices that this company makes, which might mean they're pricey. But um, they connect specially to the Raspberry Pi's custom firmware this company made, Z-Wave. And um, this company made this little shroud for the Raspberry Pi. They put their own firmware on it. And it allows them to connect over, let me see where it is, uh, 300 Z-Wave enabled devices. So any devices like that. So you can put your thermostat, your security system, your uh, Z-Wave enabled cameras to that. So you can kind of look at what's going on through the Raspberry Pi. And... I kind of give him props for this company in uh, Europe, and I don't know if it's in the U.S. actually, but um, I give him props because C uh, CCTV systems, security systems are very pricey, and when it comes to the most pricey part of a kind of security system isn't really the cameras. The cameras are relatively cheap, and you can use mostly generic cameras when it comes to what you really want, though, but um, what comes pricey is the DVR. The DVR is where everything's stored and stuff. And that's the main thing that's like $500 a DVR for a CCTV system or security system could cost you. It could have a four terabyte hard drive. It needs storage to put all your videos and things depending on the quality and uh, how much you're recording with your cameras. So this is a very cheap option. You can even do this without this company. You can just buy a Raspberry Pi and hook up uh, CCTV uh, wireless uh, cameras. You can get a wireless enabled camera, an IP camera, and hook it up to a Raspberry Pi without this company's help. But it's kind of cool that a company is giving the initiative to make this possible. So the third article we have is kind of crazy, and I still can't believe these articles we're getting with Microsoft talking about Linux and how deep Microsoft is really getting with Linux nowadays and how much embedded it is with Linux almost in a sense. Um, so Microsoft's Linux-based cloud OS scores a win for SDN, and now this is kind of crazy. So Microsoft is big with its Azure cloud platform, and it, that's how it does a lot of things with servers, and it's big on that. It's still very big with server space, but... Their new CEO, uh, Nadella, he really can see, he sees the writing on the wall about Linux, that Linux is here and it's going to stay here. And it's Linux is also very popular in the server space. I don't think without the server space, Linux would be alive right now if that Linux never got on the servers. Um, with Linux being so relatively available with many distributions that are server enabled and server specific and for it being free, it makes a valuable option for corporations and cost effectiveness. So Microsoft sees this and with Steve Ballmer behind the wheel of Microsoft, he didn't want to think about Linux. He didn't want to talk about Linux. He didn't care about Linux. He only cared about the Microsoft way, Microsoft's thing. Um, everything about Microsoft, he cared about that. But Nadella, he sees the wider picture, the broader picture of the world's ecosystem um, of the world's ecosystem of technologies and how companies are running their businesses and they might not use the Azure platform. So he's actually seeing he's they are making softwares for Linux. They made the uh, um, Visual Studio Code for Linux, which I still can't believe. I feel I feel it's one of the best text editors you can use in Linux. Um, and it's kind of crazy what the Microsoft that we're seeing in 2015 and we're going to see in the future. It's kind of crazy to see this. So what Microsoft did is they're trying to solve a problem with their routers and switches. So as you can imagine, the routers and switches, if you've ever dealt with a router or a switch, the software on them are clunky. The, the firmware is awful usually when it comes to these softwares. Like a home router is disgusting if you try to deal with DNS or uh, IP forwarding. Things like that are disgusting. The whole system is terrible. Now, what these switches that Microsoft are dealing with are server grade, they're industrial grade, but even their software isn't up to Microsoft par, and how they wanted to plug into their different things is not the way they want it. So they built the Azure Cloud Switch, the uh, or ACS for short, which is based on Linux. It is a Linux-based operating system that they're customly running on network switches and routers, and it's minimal in the sense, and uh, you, you, here's an even um, kind of a overview here and we'll even go into it a little bit more i don't really understand this picture in a way because i'm not really good with servers at the moment yet but if you know how servers work you can kind of look this over and uh, the azure cloud switch is right there now let's go back to our main article so with this it's amazing to see that microsoft's doing this because microsoft has more options than making a linux distribution or making a linux 
based OS for networking, um, to be more specific. Now, Microsoft has more options than this. They have the cut down version of Windows 8 on the Raspberry Pi they could have used, or they could have made an even more custom version of Windows that was so bare bones it was just terminal. But they chose to go the Linux route, and I believe that is because I don't think they could ever get Windows minimal, minimal enough to work effectively on a network switch or a router and all the progress that they that we've made in the linux community for networking and routers and servers i don't think that if microsoft tried to do it on their own they'd have to go through all the things that linux went through when it did this kind of growth for networking and the ability to run so minimalistically on a device using almost no ram almost no memory I don't think Microsoft or and Windows could effectively do that in the time frame they needed. So that's why they really went the OS, a uh, Linux based OS route. So the next thing is in gaming. Uh, if you're into those kind of um, horror games where you can't really fight back, this is Alien Isolation and it's coming to Mac and Linux next week. Uh, kind of exciting. I love when new AAA games are being ported to Linux. I don't think we'll ever see Batman because Batman was a mess on Windows itself. Um, so maybe we'll eventually see that on Linux. I don't know how that's going to run because it barely could run on Windows and other platforms in the first place for PC. But for Alien Isolation, it's coming out. Um, one thing I didn't really like about uh, them talking about this is, uh, okay, so um, for a Mac, you can use a AMD 5000 series graphics card or better, and for an NVIDIA 600 series or better with Intel, Intel Iris Pro gra series graphics. Now, for the Linux thing, which I almost doesn't make sense, and I assume they're targeting AMD with the Mac sign with the Mac Pro, which I believe is the only Mac that runs AMD cards. Um, I'm not actually sure about that. Don't quote me on that. Uh, the the only thing I don't like about the Linux side is the game requires an NVIDIA 600 series graphics card or better running driver uh, version 355.11 or better Intel AMD and GPU uh, AMD and GPUs are not supported. So if you have an AMD card, you're not going to be able to play this kind of uh, thing. And even in the comments, like, so what's up with Linux? No AMD. That's kind of garbage on that part. So I gave for a port, but if you're an AMD user, it's not really that good. You can't really play it. So I don't know. Um, and the last article we're going to talk about is Maker Faire. I'm going to be going to Maker Faire this weekend. So it's Friday now. I'm going to be going there tomorrow. Um, if you see me there, please don't be afraid to walk up to me, introduce yourself, say hi to me. I love to say hi to people. It'd be amazing to see any, any of my people on the YouTube, any of my subscribers, if you're going there, if you're in the New York area, I'm going to be there tomorrow and Sunday. So if you're there, um, hit me up on Twitter. Just send me a direct message on Twitter or tweet at me on another post. Um, just tweet at me and uh, you will can figure something out if you're at Maker Faire. I love Maker Faire. I'm going to probably be hanging out with my local makerspace that's going there. They made it something called a steam wagon, which is a took a box truck, they gutted it, and they put they have uh, 3D printers in it, they have a laser cutter, they have laptops, and they call it a steam wagon because they're going to go around the schools, and it stands for certain things like science, technology, education, engineering, and math, I think. Um, and all these things are in the truck, and you can go, they're going to go around to schools in my local area and be able to teach kids about 3D printing, laser cutting, all those cool things. And so if you see that, if you're at Maker Faire and you see the steam wagon, I'm probably going to be inside that or be around that most likely. So that's going to be it for this video. What do you think about the ANS podcast? This is the first pre-recorded broadcast we're going to do. Maybe we'll eventually we'll go live if I get enough support on this. So definitely hit the like button, make a comment down below, leave your feedback, please. It helps me keep this series going if it gets popular enough. So it's going to be cool. So as always, my name is Anton Suarez. Please rate, like, and subscribe. And... I'll see you guys in the next video.